You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with Jacob Morrison. We got a question in the chat, uh, uh, Connor, and we only got just a little bit here, so we may have to pick it up on the other side of the break. But uh, how do you deal with high turnover while you're organizing? This is something that I really don't know that that we've that there is a conclusive answer to it because it's such a hard it's such a hard thing to deal with a high turnover rate we talked about it with uh, the graduate workers union for new york university a while back and they had they had a, a good answer to it i thought uh, that clip is on our youtube channel you can go and find that and see see how they deal with it, it successfully you know they've got a union and they just want a really really good contract uh, so see what they've got to say on the other side of the break we're going to see what Connor has to say. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with Jacob Morrison. Labor creates all wealth. All wealth should go to labor. This is the Valley Labor Report. My name is Jacob Morrison here with my co-host, Adam Keller. We are joined by Connor Lewis, a longtime union staffer and editor of the labor journalism collective Strike Wave. They have a fundraiser going on the month of July. Connor, have y'all met your goal yet? Your stretch goal? We're just a couple hundred bucks short. We're pretty close to it, but not quite there. So if you want to, if you like what you've been hearing from Connor um, and you have the ability to donate to their fundraiser, uh, I'd recommend doing it. They have some excellent, excellent pieces. Uh, I think, what's the website? Uh, the website is thestrikewave.com. Thestrikewave.com. Uh, make sure y'all go to that. They've got some really good pieces. They There is this crazy story, and maybe uh, when we've come to, to kind of a good, like like in the next couple of months, whenever we come to a, a uh, resolution or a good stopping point in this story, you can come on and talk to us about that. But there's this crazy story out in California this 100,000 member local, uh, the SEIU local 1,000. I mean, it's just the, it's bonkers, the stuff happening there. And you can read about it on the strike wave. Got some really fantastic original reporting on that. Some, I mean, just, just, it's a great, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. You should, you should support it. Um, So, uh, what is your answer for organizing in a high turnover scenario, Connor? And really quick before you answer that, if you have a question that has not been answered, give us a call. 1-866-494-9866. That phone number is 1-866-494-9866. Connor, how would you deal with a high turnover workplace? You know, that's that's a really difficult problem, uh, especially since, you know, a lot of workplaces now rely on kind of a model where you've got really high turnover workforces. Um, and especially I know, you know, locally, uh, I live in State College, Pennsylvania, which is right around Penn State. You've got a really, really high turnover seasonal workforce and a lot of hospitality. And a lot of them are, you know, undergraduates that don't necessarily know that much about their labor rights. And, you know, you've got a lot of really horrific uh, ex- Exploitation, and there have been a lot of wage theft cases locally uh, dealing with, um, you know, tipping pools and that kind of thing. So, you know, first thing is, um, I don't know that there is a purifier answer. I mean, it's it's a very difficult problem that's going to depend a little bit on the situation, whether it's just high turnover because um, of employee dissatisfaction. Um, I know that I've got a lot of, um, I work with a lot of school districts where they have a pretty high turnover workforce simply because um, a lot of employees will find a job in a uh, different school district that maybe they feel is a little bit more supportive um, or has better working conditions. Um, so is it is it a question of employee dissatisfaction? or is it that you just have a workplace where it's kind of structured around that kind of very um, very high turnover? Do you have a lot of seasonal workers, that kind of thing? Like in the Amazon campaign, um, I know in Bessemer, that was a big part of it was that um, you had a lot of uh, seasonal workers um, and they kind of rely on this very kind of uh, high turnover part-time um, you know, element to their workforce. So I think that's the first question is, 
when you're talking about high turnover as an organizing committee, try to figure out, okay, what, why is it high turnover? Is this a structural thing or is it because employees are unhappy? Because I think that if it's employee dissatisfaction, that's an easier thing to deal with from an organizing perspective. Because what you can do is actually tap into that as one of your issues. Um, you can tap into that as, look, you're dissatisfied. We understand. We want to improve it. We want to make this a place where you can stay. We want to make this an employer where you don't feel like you've got to leave after a year or after six months or how, however long. We want this to be an employer where you can stay and feel supported and have the, you know, the pay and the benefits that you need to actually support yourself and support your family. So that, I think, is a little bit easier because you can actually pretty directly address that problem with your organizing message that we want to all the things that are leading people to leave, we want to address those. If it's a seasonal workforce, that's a lot harder. Um, and I don't know that there is a surefire answer to that. I think that one of the things that you can talk to a lot of folks about, uh, especially folks that might be there on uh, temporary positions or seasonal positions that would like to be there uh, full time, is that, look, one of the things that you can bargain over, um, there's no guarantee you're going to get it, but one of the things that you can bargain over is more stability for part-time workers, uh, potentially a pathway to becoming full-time um, that could be really appealing to those kinds of folks. Um, but ultimately, that's just something that you've got to organize around. Right. And this really gets back to the importance of the list, especially when you have high turnover. Um, every couple of months, your list may be out of date. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a really important thing to make sure that you're updating your list, you're reaching these new hires, that you're getting the, and also thinking about it this way, if you've got a lot of new hires that are just coming in, getting to them quickly, because they don't necessarily know what to make of the workplace, and you can help them both with, okay, here's how you navigate the workplace. You can help them, uh, you know, adjust to the job and then also plug them into some of the organizing. Um, so there are a lot of different ways that you can kind of think about the problem and what it poses for your organizing campaign. There's no surefire like silver bullet, you know, this is what you got to do and it's going to work. You got It's an issue that you've got to kind of assess how it's playing out in your workplace and organize organize around it. Um, and I don't know that there's going to be one, you know, one size fits all, but it's definitely something that you can organize around. Um, and one thing to also keep in mind, and this was uh, also the case uh, in the Amazon campaign, I know that when you actually get to a vote, even some employees that are no longer employed at the employer may actually end up voting. And so making sure that you're getting to these people rather than, you know, just saying, oh, they might not vote um, can only help you. It's, right. it's difficult, especially when you're talking about a huge pool of people, um, but it's, it's an essential part of the organizing. Now, that's kind of on the, the front end. When you're getting to some of the issues that you face with like a high turnover, structurally high turnover workforce like graduate assistants, where no matter what you do, it doesn't matter what you do, every two to five years, you're going to have almost a complete changeover in everyone that's part of your bargaining unit. It's a challenge, but it's also a challenge that forces graduate employee unions to do something that's really important, which is continually organize. They constantly have to organize just to stay afloat, which actually makes them stronger as a union long term. So I think that I've, I've talked to myself uh, in a circle. I think there is a silver bullet, organizing. I mean, that, that, that is always the silver bullet. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of different ways to think about the problem and to address the problem, but I think that ultimately it comes down to it's an organizing problem, and you can organize around it. There we go. So we've got our answer for that. If you want to see what we are up to throughout the week and get our snide quips about the news of the day, then you should follow us on social media. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Valley Labor Report. We are on Twitter at Labor Reporters. I'm on Twitter at Jacob M underscore AL. This week is going to be a really good week to follow us on social media because uh, I think 
it maybe uh, I think at least one of us are going to try to get down to the uh, Mine Workers Rally in Brookwood. It's going to be huge, so you want to uh, be sure to get those updates. If you missed part of the show and you want to watch it later, you can search YouTube for the Valley Labor Report and subscribe to our channel. Uh, you can watch the full show and we clip segments and release them throughout the week. We also upload the program on more than eleven different podcasting apps. So to see if we are on your listening platform of choice, you can go to the Valley Labor Report. Dot transistor dot fm slash subscribe we've got a website where you can buy our hats and stickers folks we've only got like five hats left so if you want one of them you need to like you need to get on that we've only got just a, seriously a handful left thirty five dollars union made made in America um, uh, thirty five dollars that includes shipping the Valley Labor Report dot Org. You can also buy stickers and bumper stickers there as well. And finally, if you appreciate our work and want to help us stay on the air, then you can donate a couple dollars a month to us on patreon.com slash the Valley Labor Report. 